வணக்கம் ஹூ சேஸ் யூ கேனாட் லேர்ன் வைல் ஹேவிங் ஃபன் வெல்கம் டு த கிரேட் டான்பேப் ஸ்குவிஸ் த இன்ஃபர்டெயின்மெண்ட் ப்ரோக்ராம் இன் த ரன் அப் டு தி ஆன்வல் கான்ஃபரன்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி தமிழ்நாடு அண்ட் பாண்டிச்சேரி அசோசியேஷன் ஆஃப் பிளாஸ்டிக் சர்ஜன்ஸ் டு பி ஹெல்ட் ஃப்ரம் ஃபெப்ரவரி நைன் டு லெவன் ட்வெண்ட்டி ட்வெண்ட்டி ஃபோர் Question number 1 Paul Brand who conceived the EF40 procedure also wrote this book which was published in 1993 name the book The Gift of Pain Pain the gift nobody wants 10 fingers for god reconstructive leprosy surgery and the correct answer is pain the gift nobody wants dr paul wilson brand wrote many books both religious and medical like fearfully and wonderfully made in 1980 in his image and the forever feast but one of his best known books co-written with philip yancy is pain the gift nobody wants which was published in 1993 This book was republished in 1997 as The Gift of Pain but his most popular clinical book is Clinical Mechanics of the Hand published in 1985 a biography was written on him 10 fingers for god by Dorothy Clark Wilson question number 2 the following is characteristic of eyelid involvement in Treacher Collins syndrome anti-mongoloid obliquity of the palpebral fissures coloboma of upper eyelids lengthening of palpebral fissure thick layers of eyelashes the correct answer is anti-mongoloid obliquity of palpebral fissures The characteristics of the eyelids in Treacher Collins syndrome are as follows: anti-mongoloid obliquity of the eyelids, coloboma of the lower eyelids, shortening of the palpebral fissure, absence of eyelashes, and notching of eyebrows and upper eyelids. Question number 3: The technique of forehead flap illustrated is the Gillies flap, Washio flap, Converse flap. or news flap the correct answer is the converse flap there are many designs of flaps that can use the skin from the forehead for reconstruction of structures on the face some of these designs are the converse scalping flap used for reconstruction of defects on the nose the oblique forehead flap the median forehead flap sometimes known as the bishop mitre flap the news sickle flap the gillies up and down flap the washio flap that is taken from the postauricular region but the pedicle is based on the forehead skin and the horizontal forehead flap question number 4 zones of abdominal wall blood supply have been described by huger bozola hartram or ian taylor the correct answer is huger huger described different zones of the abdominal blood supply zone 1 was the area fed anteriorly by the vertically oriented deep epigastric arcade zone 2 was the lower abdominal wall fed by superficial epigastric superficial external pudendal and superficial circumflex iliac systems and zone 3 referred to the lateral aspect of the abdominal wall that is the flanks fed by the six lateral intercostal and four lumbar arteries Bozola on the other hand published a classification including five different groups of aesthetic deformities of the abdomen with assigned operative procedures question number 5 according to the halock classification of flaps 
the following is described as chimeric flap, composite flap, compound flap or conjoined flap. The answer is conjoined flap. According to the Halox classification of flaps, compound flaps are those which have more than one kind of tissue in the flap. These flaps are of two types. They could be composite flaps or combined flaps. Composite flaps are those which have multiple tissue components all served by the same single vascular supply. For example, the pectoralis major myocutaneous flap where the muscle and the skin are supplied by the same vessel. The combined flaps on the other hand have differing patterns of blood supply to the different components of tissues in the flap. They can be classified into two types, conjoined flaps and chimeric flaps. In conjoined flaps there are multiple flap territories and dependent because of some common physical junction but they have different vascular supply. But the chimeric flaps although they too have multiple flap territories and each with an independent vascular supply there is a common source vessel. So a single anastomosis is enough to vascularize a chimeric flap. Question number 6. The surgical procedure demonstrated for reconstruction of the vagina is Gracilis myoplasty, modified Singapore flap, McIntyre procedure or the pedicled rectus myocutaneous flaps. The correct answer is the modified Singapore flap. This flap is based on the posterior labial arteries and innervated by the perineal branches of the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. The flaps are raised in the thigh crease lateral to the hair bearing labia majora. The posterior skin margin is marked at the level of the posterior fourche. The skin, subcutaneous tissue, deep fascia of the thigh and the epimysium of the adductor muscles are raised in the flap. Posteriorly, the base of the flap is undermined at subcutaneous level to facilitate rotation and insetting. These flaps are raised on both sides and inset by tunneling under the labia majora or by division of the labia at the level of the fourche. The donor site is closed primarily on both sides. Question number 7. In true ptosis of the breast, the following is true. Inframammary fold position is fixed normal. Parenchymal position is mobile descended. Clavicle to nipple distance is normal. Nipple to fold distance is elongated. The correct statement is, in true ptosis of the breast, inframammary fold position is fixed normal. True ptosis of the breast must be differentiated from glandular ptosis, parenchymal maldistribution and pseudotosis. In true ptosis of the breast, the inframammary fold position is fixed and normal. The parenchymal position is fixed but rotated. The nipple to fold distance is unchanged and is normal. The clavicle to the nipple distance is elongated. In glandular ptosis, the inframammary fold position is mobile and descended. The parenchymal position is again mobile and descended. The nipple to fold distance is elongated and the clavicle to nipple distance is also elongated. When there is parenchymal maldistribution, the inframammary fold position is fixed high. The parenchymal position is also fixed high. The nipple to fold distance is short and the clavicle to nipple distance is normal. In pseudotosis, the inframammary fold position is variable and sometimes low. 
The parenchymal position is mobile descended. The nipple to fold distance is elongated and the clavicle to nipple distance is surgically fixed because this condition occurs usually after surgical procedures. Question number 8. The extensa digiti minimi tendon occupies which of the following dorsal extensor compartments at the wrist? Third, fourth, fifth or sixth? The correct answer is the fifth dorsal extensor compartment. There are six dorsal extensor wrist compartments the first being posterior or dorsal to the radial styloid, the second and third compartments being on either side of the Lister's tubercle on the dorsal aspect of the lower end of the radius, the fifth and sixth compartments on either side of the ulnar styloid and the sixth compartment dorsal to the prominence of the ulnar head. The first compartment contains the abductor pollicis longus tendon and the extensor pollicis brevis tendons. The second compartment comprises the extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis tendons. The third compartment comprises the extensor pollicis longus tendon. The fourth compartment comprises the extensor digitorum communis tendons and the extensor indices proprius tendon. The fifth compartment comprises the extensor digiti minimi and the sixth compartment contains the extensor carpi ulnaris tendon. Question number 9. One of the landmarks to commonly predict the course of the temporal branches of the facial nerve is the proximal third of the palpable zygomatic arch, 1.5 cm medial to the tail of the eyebrow, parallel and adjacent to the inferior temporal septum or immediately inferior to the sentinel vein that is the medial zygomatico temporal vein. The correct answer is the temporal branches of the facial nerve are parallel and adjacent to the inferior temporal septum. The following are the classical landmarks of the temporal branches of the facial nerve. 1. The middle third of the palpable zygomatic arch. 1.5 cm lateral to the tail of the eyebrow. Parallel and adjacent to the inferior temporal septum and immediately inferior to the sentinel vein or the medial zygomatico temporal vein. Question number 10. The following is a true statement about the superior gluteal artery. Is a continuation of the posterior division of the internal iliac artery. It exits from the pelvis below the lower border of the piriformis muscle. It accompanies the greater sciatic nerve. The perforators travel obliquely to reach the skin and subcutaneous tissues. The correct answer is the superior gluteal artery is a continuation of the posterior division of the internal iliac artery. The vessel runs dorsally between the lumbosacral trunk and the first sacral nerve. It exits from the pelvis above the upper border of the piriformis muscle where it quickly divides into both a superficial and deep branch. The perforators from this vessel travel straight to reach the skin and subcutaneous tissues unlike the perforators from the inferior gluteal artery that travel obliquely. I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please register for the TANPAPS 2024 conference, a wonderful scientific and academic feast where many innovative and interesting sessions are being planned. Do visit the website to see the details and to register. Vanakkam.